Welcome once again, everybody, to Blockbuster Mentality. I'm your host, Ben. Make sure you're following us on iTunes. Rate and review us. Give us that five-star review. Helps us out a lot. We've been climbing those charts. Today, we have another fun episode. We talk with Robert Eiler, who played uh, AJ Soprano on the Sopranos. Uh, awesome dude. Uh, we talked to good fellas, but uh, more importantly, we, we, we got into a lot of stuff, man. We went on t- into a lot of tangents, which uh, I always like, um, you know, just uh, when we get outside the movie a little bit and then go back and forth, talked about his sobriety, talked about Sopranos, obviously, talked about him uh, in his uh, poker career a little bit, talked about sports, uh, talk about a lot and you're going to hear it all. So, uh, but uh, be, I had a blast with him. Uh, make sure you're following us on Twitter at Blockbuster Cast, uh, Blockbuster Mentality on Instagram. Go to blockbustermentality.com. Um, I'm out of breath because I just went pee and came back here to record these intros and outros. So, hey, you know, I'm a fat guy and uh, I get out of breath. What are you going to do? <sighs> but go to blockbustermentality.com. That's where all the new shows uh, will will be as well. Uh, he, he has a podcast called Pajama Pants. You can get it wherever uh, podcasts are found. And uh, again, great conversation. Uh, here's me uh, speaking with Robert Eiler. I was just listening to like three hours of football podcasts and they were talking about the line. They were like... Uh, well, they, they were like, who can you, like, cause they were talking about Cincinnati's chances this weekend. And they're like, man, like coming from the bottom, they're like, can you name one team that, you know, a couple of years ago would have been more surprising. And the guy was like lions. And he was like, yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, was it, up, man. it, man, it, I think, uh, Cincinnati's win is now made us the longest drought without a playoff win. Uh, so thanks Cincinnati for, for giving, for handing it over to us. Uh, so the, even when you guys, I feel like there was like a, a minute where like when you guys had Megatron and there, no? Yeah, well, we made the playoffs twice, I think, with Megatron and Stafford. Um, but we we haven't won one since 91. So, wow. yeah, uh, I was two years old. So, yeah, it's uh, my my whole life has has been this. Who's that? Who's your team? Uh, so I used to be a fan of a lot of teams now, like a, you know, a football team, a baseball team, a hockey team of this, but now I'm really only like, I'm still forever a Yankee fan, but everything else, like I've, I moved to Vegas when Sopranos ended to like try and play poker professionally. And the, uh, betting on sports, you just, you hate every team so much after a couple <laughs> of years that I'm just like, I don't have a fucking team, but I still like, I'll always love the Yankees, you know? And like. When New York teams win, I'm happy. Yeah. You know, but it's, uh, I, I grew up, I liked, I love Dan Marino, so I was like a Dolphins fan for a little bit, and this, but as soon as I started gambling a lot, like living <laughs> in Vegas, I was like, fuck all these guys. Yeah. You know, just, yes. uh, whoever, I have a favorite team every week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, well, that's the same thing with you know fantasy football. I I started hating football for a little bit with fantasy just because I would just be obsessed with it. Like, oh my guys are doing terrible. Like, I would just you know be on NFL Red Zone and all that, and it's just like I gotta stop. I gotta take a break from football. This is <laughs> ridiculous. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessing, and it's and it's over like a bragging rights league like i don't even do it with money so it's like uh this is i, I got to get that love back and i'm 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 getting there i'm in uh tampa now so uh i've i've been rooting for the hometown team the bucks so that that's been fun obviously the tough loss this this past week but you know it's uh it, it, it is what it is it, i mean are are you in uh vegas now or is that where no, you so reside I, I left uh i left vegas to start a podcast with jamie lynn who played my sister on sopranos and i moved to uh la and then after about a year of being here she moved to texas because <laughs> with covid and yeah everything going on she has two kids and like they weren't able to go to school and so she just uh she picked up and moved to austin so i'm I'm still here for a little bit. I, I I would like. I grew up in New York City my entire life, and that's where I would love to live. But like, I made the mistake, or I don't know if it was a mistake, but I made the choice to do a couple uh, winters away. And once you do a couple winters away, you're like, you go back and you're like, what am I doing to my body and like my brain and just like this is for, like 
you start to hate, it's like hangovers. Like you start to hate yourself because you're like, man, I did this to myself. Like you go outside and it's fucking cold and you're like, well, whose fault is this? It's your, right. like, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, li- I like, yeah. Like I said, I, you know, Detroit to Tampa, but yeah, like I, I can take, you know, the cold for a week or two. It's like nice, nice little change, but then it's just like, yeah, I, I need to, I need to get back with, uh, I got, I got, I got thinner blood now, so I got to gotta get back um yeah you, for a week it's fine but you're like running errands in the freezing cold it's garbage yes exactly then it's just like i hate my life uh especially when you had to wake up early or something in the and it's still dark uh, out and you're tired it's just like oh i'm scraping the car window and oh uh, yeah no thank you no thank you if you live somewhere where when your friends ask you if you want to go to dinner you have to think about the weather then you're just you're losing like <laughs> exactly you know, that should never be a thing like I, in la someone's like hey you want to go to dinner i'm like do i want to go like in new york i'd be a cold down to me look check new york one it's like fucking four degrees i'm like no i don't want to go like yeah. I, I, I don't want to see you yeah. that bad like yeah it's it, it, yeah you gotta think like is it worth it is is it worth it and it's just like no no it's not I, yeah i can i can have food at my house there's food here so yeah I'm just, gonna, <laughs> just gonna do that uh, yeah because i mean i was gonna say weren't you like in la during that but sopranos was filmed like in new jersey and stuff wasn't All it jersey, or did, yeah yeah even like the set and stuff was in new jersey like the set sets. was uh right over the 59th street bridge in uh queens but anytime we did uh on location stuff it was always jersey yeah okay yeah that's uh yeah so then then you moved to la after what 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 how did the whole the the poker thing start when did you uh uh so I, I went to play at a poker game i forget how old i was like 18 or some shit too young and, probably uh, Oh, for sure. Yeah. But like I'm playing at the game and I see these people who are like, yeah, man, these guys are here every day. Like they're always playing. And I, as soon as I started playing, I was like, I think I'm better than these guys. Like uh, these guys just fucking suck and they don't get it. And my mom told me that my grandmother, when she would babysit me, would just play cards with me all day, like rummy, you know, whatever. So I, I started like getting my friends together, like, yo, we should play poker. And like you teach people who don't know like okay here's what beats this and here's that and 10 minutes later they're like wait what i don't know like i have this and i'm like how do you not fucking know this like (laughs) but it was just because i i didn't understand that like not everybody learned it it's like uh your abcs you know it's like i i didn't i don't remember learning my abcs but i fucking know them like right yeah so i just i had all the you know and not that i was like some amazing poker player but i just i was better than these guys who were putting hundreds of dollars on the table and i was like all right well if i'm better than these guys like let me play and then when sopranos ended it was the first time you know i started working when i was six it was the first time where like i had my life to myself and i was like all right like i I, this is what i want to do and like why shouldn't I, you know? And I just fucking went, I was like, I'm single, I'm young, I got yeah. some money, I'm gonna go to Vegas and see like what it's like. And I fucking did, and it was, you know, I, I, I haven't drank in nine years because, oh, wow. <laughs> because of how fucking insane I was in Vegas. And yeah. Vegas is just a fucking crazy place to live no matter what you're doing. But, yeah, well, uh, so you were like in your 20s at that time, like in, uh, right? Or yeah, yeah in assume. my 20s. Yeah, like, and, yeah and that'll, would, <laughs> that'll do it. Yeah, I was in my twenties, and I would like go and kind of come back, and then go, and I'd go for like a week, but I'd stay for two months, and then one time, I went for um, two weeks to play the World Series of Poker, and I came home almost two years later. Like I oh. just was, yeah, I got, fucking got an apartment on the strip because like I did well in the World Series of Poker, and I was like, I'm just gonna put this money in an account, and it's gonna pay my rent every month, and I'm just gonna hang here, and that's what I did, and uh, yeah, I think it was that time that when I came back, I shortly after that I was like, I gotta get sober because this is just fucking. Yeah, like drinking. It made drinking like not even fun anymore. Like I went there and drinking was fun. And by the time I left, I was like, man, this is like a job. Right. Yeah. It's like I got to do this just to keep going. Yeah. It's 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 tough when it when it gets like that, especially when you 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 have to use it as a crutch. You know. Uh, You know. Sometimes I'll 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 have a couple. You know, just to get loose for the podcast or something. But you you definitely don't want to turn it into a crutch because then it's just like you're never going to be able to do it. You know without yeah well vegas is tough because it's like i'd be chilling and i'd be like okay it's friday night i'm gonna go out and then i'd go like you know i i I was at a time where i was doing drugs i'd party for like fucking three days straight and then on monday or like tuesday i'd kind of be like oh i'm recovering and this and i'd get a phone call like yo i just landed i'd be like what like my friends like i told you i was coming like we're gonna hang right i'm like fuck and like (laughs) then you go to the pool you're partying again and just like it it would never stop like if you if you had a two-week period 
or like you weren't drinking. It was like all thing. Because even then I'd be like, okay, well, I'm going to go play poker. And then you're playing poker for 10 hours and you win some money. And then somebody's like, you want to do a shot? And you're like, hey, why not? I'm in Vegas fucking right. playing poker. Let's and the next thing you know, it's like three days later, I'm like in a strip club on a Wednesday afternoon. Like it's like me and the guy who's like buffing the floors. Like It's just it's sad. Like, you know, so, but, but I also had some of the greatest times of my life. Well, like, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. You got those, uh, you see a lot of C-section scars and, and all that on a Wednesday afternoon at a, at a strip club club i'm sure so that's yeah that's uh that's depressing uh, <laughs> but yeah no it's great you got out of it and you know you're 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 doing you said nine years you haven't uh hadn't had anything huh yeah my birthday's uh-huh. in like a month and that'll be uh nine years i don't even remember like exactly which day it was but i was celebrating my birthday i remember so it's just like you know but luckily i'm not one of these people who's like haunted with it where like you know i just stayed in new york for two months and when i got there i was staying in a hotel for like a week and there was like uh you know bottles of tequila like not like a mini bar thing but like a full bar in the fucking little hotel room and i was like man thank god i'm not somebody who's like you know having to call somebody right now or like itching or having them remove these like i just i really think i hit a point where i was like i'm done with this shit like i can't yeah. do it you know so it was just it was just kind of a last last straw kind of thing or would you say that or was it just all right, I'm going to start on this day and that's done. Like, or had you, had you tried, you know, before? I had never really, I mean, I tried when I was like 22, I stopped drinking for nine months, but only because I wanted to stop doing Coke. And like every time I fucking drank, I did Coke and I'd be like, I don't even like this shit. Like, I don't understand why I keep doing it, but it was like, Hey, it was like, all right, you want to go home and go to bed? I was like, no, it was like, well, then you could do this. I was like, okay, like (laughs) that sounds fun. And I fucking, uh, so then my 28th birthday, so I stopped doing coke, but then like three or four years after that, I I started doing a lot of Molly and like in Vegas and New York and everywhere. And I, um, on my, on my 28th birthday, I took about 35 Molly and I was on another planet and that's the last time I partied. Man. Wow. I didn't take them like 35 in my hand, but I was up for three days and like, you know, in the first six eight hours or whatever i took about 15 and then like th- like kept popping like one or two an hour like every you know a couple hours go by you pop some and just kind of like ride in the wave and then when i woke up from that hangover or when i woke up after i just slept uh i actually like was scared that i had done permanent damage to myself like i was like man yeah. i don't know if i'll ever be the same like i was you know if if i heard like any noise like i was like uh like a you know when like a dog gets hit and then somebody adopts him and like he's just shivering in the corner like sure yeah it was fucking bad but luckily uh yeah i didn't eat for a week and i went to like uh the doctor and i'm like what's going on i can't stop throwing up i'm sick i'm this and he's like when's the last time you've had a fucking vegetable or eaten healthy yeah. he's tried he's like try being healthy for a couple of days and i did and that's nine years ago now wow yeah yeah it's crazy yeah it seems i mean I, I mean, I obviously haven't been that extreme, but you know, I've, I've gone where, you know, I've gone a period of time and it's like, wow, I feel like, you know, uh, someone sprayed a hose inside my body and it just, you know, I'm just like, wow, <laughs> like why, yeah. why don't I hold on to this feeling? Well, how much, how much of that do you think? I mean, was it just, uh, out of, out of boredom or how much do you think, uh, being like young in the, in the, in the entertainment industry had anything to, to do with that? I actually think, you know, Sopranos is the thing that saved me. Like, I had a lot of friends who, you know, I got about five friends who I grew up with who are dead now, who are just from, like, drug overdoses and shit. And they were, like, real, you know, real close friends. And uh, that's, I feel like that would have been more me. Like, but uh, luckily, like, you know, when I was time to change shit around, it's like, yo, look at you, man. Like, you know, it's not like I grew up in the worst fucking place in the world, but I grew up in a place where like nobody makes it, you know, yeah. like, I grew up in like income housing in New York City. And like, it wasn't like, oh, like you, well, you could be like that guy. And there was like these success stories. Like it was just like, hey, man, you know, if you're lucky, you get your grandpa's job and you could be a fucking super too, and like whatever. And I was like, OK. And I think, uh, you know, I had, a, I had friends who were 33 years old, still living with their mom in the building I grew up in. And then now they're, you know, they passed away or whatever. And it's like, I, I think there's part of me that's like, man, if I was 20 years old and instead of having a good time in Vegas and this, like doing what some of my friends were doing, which was like doing drugs just to escape, not to, you know, have a good time. And sometimes I used it to escape or whatever, but like, yeah, uh, I think a lot of it was, some of it was boredom. Some of it was like, you know, 
when we finished Sopranos, I didn't want to work. I wanted to just hang and like, who do you hang with Wednesday at two in the morning? You know, it's like, there's not people who are like, oh, I'm doing yoga and I'm fucking doing this. So I just, you know, I started hanging out with people and I always loved it. Like I loved smoking weed. I loved drinking right when I started. I always looked up to like rock stars and that's the life I want to live and fucking partying and this. But I think there's a big thing to me that I remember when I was young, which is like, don't do drugs. Losers do drugs and, and that's what you were told and like you know drugs are bad this and then like you found out like all the cool people did drugs and then <laughs> right. you did them and you're like this is fucking awesome like <laughs> the people are just lying to me you know instead of them explaining like well you don't want to do drugs because one day you wake up and you can't function without them and these are the type of people who that happens to and then like show us examples yep. instead of like trying to pretend like everyone who does drugs is a fucking loser and like <laughs> blah, blah 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 so i just like when i started drinking and smoking and everything i remember like this thing opened in my brain of like oh my god everything is a lie you know like they yeah. just don't want you to have fun they yeah. <laughs> fucking keep you down and i was like you know pedal they're, to the metal they're afraid it's you know not gonna there's not gonna be enough to go around so they want to keep it for themselves and yeah. you know have <laughs> have their own good time that's that's what that's about man i've been the, this dare program what's this all about come on the same reason where it was like they would tell me to go to bed at nine o'clock it's like oh yeah dude go to bed at nine o'clock and don't do drugs huh like fuck you i'm gonna stay up all night <laughs> on drugs like just you know it was fucking stupid but yeah it's uh yeah it's a it's a it's a struggle but uh, yeah i'm glad you got out of it and yeah i've been going going strong uh obviously we're gonna we're gonna get to the movie we're a movie show we, yeah. you know where it's uh but yeah no this is uh yeah been been great uh we're talking with Robert Eiler here, and uh, so do, you, do you go by Rob or Robert? Are you? Uh, you does, doesn't whatever, matter. Whatever anybody uh, hey, likes to, to call me. Yeah, it's, yeah, you know, I'm not. I know there's people who like get all uptight about their name, or like if yeah. you misspell their name, or so. Like, I have one friend who's like the nicest friend in the world. But if somebody calls him like Mister and then his last name, he gets like furious. I'm like, oh, what's man. the matter? Like, I'm like, I don't. <laughs> You know, where it's like, for me, I don't give a shit what people yeah. call me, you know. It's like, yeah, you, you know who you're talking to. Just, yeah, wh- whatever, you know. Uh, are you still uh, doing the podcast? Yeah, so we've been doing the podcast. We were doing the podcast in L.A., and we had it in studio, and it was fucking amazing. And uh, and then after COVID, we moved to Zoom, which is, I still love doing it, but, like, you know, you look back at the fucking days yeah. where, like, man, when we were in the studio, it was just, it was unpredictable, it was funny, you didn't know what was going to happen, and now, like, you know, we're over Zoom, and, but I, I listen, I, I, Jamie's one of my best friends in the world, and we do it with our other friend, Kasim, and just, like, being able to spend time with those two every week, I would do it anyway, so, like, the fact that there's people who enjoy the podcast, and there's this little community we have, it's, it's nice, it's fun. Yeah, definitely, and, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, because we, you know, would always do it in person too. Because I usually have a co-host. Unfortunately, who wasn't able to make it, but uh, um, and then we started doing over Zoom. You, you get used to it, but yeah, there's something about the the in-person show where it's just like it's it's a different different energy. That's for sure. Um, but but you know, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. You know, you gotta the the world changed. We had to change with it, I guess. Which uh, is kind of depressing, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, yeah, uh, staring, but to, staring at people compared to staring at screens. You know? ex- exactly, exactly. I'm I'm staring at a screen of a person. I'm staring at people on a screen. There you go. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, we like to have people on to uh, to come on, break down a movie. People who are in uh, in the business and things like that, and uh, kind of get their perspective on uh, the art form and why they picked the movie and things like that. I'm sure I'll sprinkle in some Soprano stuff in there to ask you. It's a completely you know casual talk on a movie, um, but uh, but you chose Goodfellas. Great choice, 1990. Uh, Martin Scorsese, obviously, Joe Pesci, Ray Liotta, Robert De Niro. Uh, why, uh, why, why this movie, Robert? You know, my favorite movie ever is uh, uh, Breakfast Club, and I just felt like this was way more fun to talk about. And I yeah. love talking. I've seen. I've just, you know, this is like, uh, of course, like Breakfast Club and Goodfellas. If if I see them on TV, I'm never gonna turn them off. But I just happen to see Goodfellas fucking way more. Like, you know, it just happens to be on more. Somebody puts it on or somebody like co walk into a room. Someone's halfway watching it. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. Because like you only need to see a bit, you know, you only need to see like one laugh, one this one moment where you're like, God, that's so 
I think, and I think it's just so fun to talk about because it's like when three, you know, they say like uh, when you're in a, when there's a car accident and like the police have to ask three people and three people say three different things. Like if they were just like standing on the corner and saw it, they saw three different things. And I think that's what happens in like Goodfellas and Casino. Like when Pesci is like killing somebody and me and my friends are laughing and then you're, you know, watching it with somebody's girlfriend and she's like, oh my God, why are you guys laughing like that. right <laughs> you're like we're watching we're seeing different shit. It's like it's the same scene and we're seeing something totally different and it's just that's that's what i love about it yeah and well and that just speaks to yeah just art in general is just yeah d- yeah yeah like you said three different people could look at it have three completely you know different uh emotional feelings from it and yeah that's this movie yeah has a lot of that because you know there's there's intense moments obviously where you're you know you're you're scared of joe pesci and there's other times where it seems like it's intense but it's still funny you know you're uh you know you're you're laughing at it like you said um but and there's uh, like you know like good art some people go i think this is funny and some people go i don't like yeah. incredible art is when somebody goes i think this is funny and someone goes i think it's terrifying <laughs> like yeah you know, you're like wow that's that's uh, that's some fucking leap you know <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Oh, there's a, oh, what's the quote? I'm sure I'll think of it. Um, uh, damn it. I'll, I'll think of it. Uh, I'm sure uh, it was, a, it's a David Foster Wallace quote. Um, but, uh, it, when it comes to me, I'll interrupt you. I'm sure in the middle and, and, uh, say it, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, this is, yeah, you no, know, one of those movies that just, you know, stands the test of time. Anytime it's on, uh, cable, if people still have cable, I don't know. Um, you know, you, t- you, you, you can put it on at any time and just be enthralled by it. Like it's, it's a ride. This movie is, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a complete ride. You know, you start with, start at in the middle kind of i love that you know opening scene where you know it's the three of them that's driving you got robert de niro sleeping in the in the in the passenger seat and you, know, you start hearing this banging and it's like what is that and it ends up being a, a trunk uh, or a guy in the trunk and it's just like whoa okay <laughs> And yeah. you you get that still shot of ever since, you know, I was young, I always wanted to be a gangster. And, you know, it's a classic, you know, Scorsese still shots, you know, through, throughout this whole thing. Um, are, are you a, are you a big Scorsese guy? I mean, who isn't you, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I uh, silly question. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> well, fuck, what was I just going to say about it? I don't know. I spaced talking about it. the beginning, maybe I, 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 I ramble. So you know, no, it's I probably... all good, man. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just, yeah. I, f- I forget what I was gonna say about the the movie, but like like you said, when it comes to me, I'll interrupt you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but but yeah, I mean, it's just again, you're 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 just on a ride from the start. You know, it's like all right, we're at the scene, and then all right, let's take you back. Every ever since you know, I was oh, that's, young, that's I wanted... the thing. That's yeah. the thing. It's like what's so great about this movie is it. It makes you question, like, you know, there, there's probably, like, housewives who watched this thing and was like, man, I wouldn't mind being Lorraine Bracco. And, like, look at this. Like, she's this – and it takes you on this ride where you're like, I wouldn't mind being this gangster's, you know, guy. And he picks me up and he gets the best parking spot and he walks me right into the front. And, th- and then it slowly takes you where you're like, oh, no. Like, this is not – what I would want, but then you got some guys who watch this movie and they're like, "Man, I I, I do like like what he said. Like, I just want to be a gangster. Like, right. after you see that, and some people watch this movie and goes, "How the fuck could you want to be a gangster after watching this movie? Like, yeah, it's just it's it's the it, the conversation is never ending. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's I've I've seen you know articles, old articles when it came out, like of um people saying it's you know glorifying that old lifestyle but i mean really it's a it's a cautionary tale i mean and you can you could you can tell i mean even by the way you know ray ray Liotta is acting you know at the end just total paranoid even de niro how he's you know totally uh paranoid um but i but i love yeah you know the him as a kid said the voice over him saying um you know I, I want to be a gangster more than I want to be, you know, president of the United States. Like that to me is status. Like, yeah, you can, you know, uh, park wherever you want, you know, like you said, and you know, it's just like, that's, that's what I want. Like it's, it was all about the, the neighborhood at that time. Like it was a, a small community, which I think is just non-existent nowadays. Um, but yeah, there was like that small community back then that, uh, y- 
people in the community had status and that's that's what he, what he was after and uh yeah it's so interesting the way scorsese tells it it's the um, best the, the only thing the only downside to this whole movie for me and my brain is that when we're talking about it today i'm scared i'm going to confuse scenes with uh casino you know yeah <laughs> yeah <'Cause it's>, I'm, <laughs> I, oh casino is a fucking it's to me it's like 10 out of 10 you know it's unreal but there are are not and nothing like with the the movie but like there are scenes where uh you know like pesci's getting the blowjob in the car and i'm like man does that i'm like that was casino right like but, but i feel like i could throw that right into goodfellas you know <laughs> right yeah well yeah because he got the guy getting uh the blowjob in the like in the jail like the, he does like a pan shot and you get you see <laughs> you see him getting one it's just like oh wow okay that's just happening right 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 in front of everybody but yeah this i mean casino yeah it seemed like a, almost like a sequel to uh goodfellas yeah it was like five years five years later same actors basically you had Frank Vincent was even in it. De Niro, Pesci, um, uh, Scorsese's mom, who uh, Scorsese's mom is in both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> plays uh, Pesci's mom in in Goodfellas. I, oh my God, that scene, man! When they, when they show up after oh. uh, <laughs> killing uh, uh, Frank Frank Vincent, uh, Bats Billy Bats was the this character's name. Yeah. I think yeah, um, <laughs> showing up. He's my. I gotta borrow this knife. You know, it, it, it's ho- ho- pause, paw, uh, yeah. no hoof. Oof. Yeah. Uh, he's like, you know, it's a, it's a sin. I can't, you know, I can't leave it there. <laughs> Meanwhile, and the gotta... painting, <laughs> the painting is the best. And he's like, oh, it looks like our friend. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. it's just it's unre. That shit is that's and like, it's crazy how with all the films that have been made and the amazing thing and the special effects and the right, it's like that to me is one of the greatest scenes. Ever yeah. just a bunch of guys sitting around with Scorsese's mom, like bullshit. <laughs> like, it's exactly. just it's unreal. Like how does how is that? Like that's that's they just fucking make magic, you know? Yeah, they got a dead body in the car. And they're just casually eating the meal and you know just talking. Like oh my god, yeah, that does look like him. And he, he, like uh, me, me and Dave always say uh, he's my co-host. We, we love One dog's looking this way, the other <laughs> yeah. dog's looking, and this guy's yeah, like, yeah. hey, what do you want from me? <laughs> It's so fucking. Oh, uh, anytime geez. anybody says somebody's looking this way, that's what comes after. Oh, exactly. yeah. One dog goes one way, one dog goes the other way. It's just yeah. like, oh my god, so so hilarious. Yeah, Pesci. I mean, it, what's funny too is you know this movie. You know, I, I think um, I, I even read. I think Robert De Niro got top billing, but uh, it he's really not in it as much as uh, you know. I remember every time I watch this, he's he's not in it as much as I remember. Because this is this is Leota's movie, it's Pesci's movie, and De Niro's. He's more just like supporting. Like he's not really, you know, the 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 lead guy. Which I think I think a lot of people tend to forget. Like this is this is uh, this is well, obviously it's you know Henry Hill's story, um, in which you know the character Ray Leota plays. But uh, but yeah, I mean it's it's not a De Niro movie. It's uh it's it's a Pesci movie. It's a Leota movie, and you know Pesci obviously won the Oscar, which was I mean, hundred <laughs> percent deserved. I mean, <laughs> how are you not going to give it to him? Um, yeah. I, here's a fun little trivia question for you. Do you know how many people? Um, I have the answer if, if you don't. Um, do you know how many people uh, were in this um, that were also in The Sopranos? Six. I I I would have guessed around that, too. Oh, it's there's, only like two? No, I would have guessed around that as well, I should have said. Um, there is 29. 29 Holy people shit. in this. I mean, they have very quick, you know, tiny, tiny little, you know, parts. Um, but yeah, yeah, tw- 29 people also uh, in the in the Sopranos. I mean, obviously wow. you got the Frank Vincent, one of the obvious ones. Um, Lorraine Bracco. Lorraine Bracco. Uh, uh, Polly Walnuts. Uh, a Tony Sirico. There you go. You know the actor's name. I would hope. Yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I was, bad I with sh- the character's name. I never watched The Promise, oh. so I'm I'm terrible with it. Really? So you never watched the series? Mm-mm. No. It's no. uh, uh 
So do you, so do you get confused when people ask about certain like storylines and things like that? No, it's great because I just tell them I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> it's you awesome. I can, yeah. I can honestly say I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, like people, I'd be like, do you remember a conversation you had with your friend 21 years ago? Like if <laughs> yeah, I asked true. you like, hey, when you were standing uh, outside of a diner with your friend 21 years ago and he said this and then you said this, you'd be like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Because I, I, I really, I don't remember. But it's it's great for me because I don't, you know, all the other people who are on the show have to come up with these answers, you know, of like, because yeah. they don't want to give you, you were never supposed to like give stuff away. So people right. had to like dance around this stuff where for me, I'd be like, I, I don't know. Yeah. And especially about the the ending. I'm sure you've been asked that a hundred times and you can just say, oh, like, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's not what was yeah. that? Was that like a conscious choice you made or did you just kind of go, go on and then you were like, I just don't feel like watching I, it? Like, uh, you know, it's kind of like the whole like your voice on an answering machine thing where you're like, ugh, like I don't want to hear that. And I was super young and like, you know, you watch every first episode on on uh, at the premieres. So you see the first episode of the first two episodes. And then like I remember the fir- like my whole family was watching the, the first season and like the living room. So like I saw a, a couple, but then like. You know, I was just like, yeah, what else is on? Like, you know, like I was like, I, I, cause you, you sit in the read throughs where everybody, right. everyone gets a script and everyone sits around and reads it. And I was, that for me was like my favorite part of the whole show. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'd be like, I know what happens. Like, I don't need to, you know, I, yeah. I, I didn't need, and I was also, you know, 12, 13 or whatever when it came out. And I was just like, I want to do other shit. Like, I don't, yeah. don't want to be sitting at home. You know, I want to be hanging out with my friends and whatever. And there was no on-demand or right. video. But not that I would have wanted to watch it anyway, but now I have the opportunity. And I'm just like, I don't I don't want to. I, it's, it, for me, it's perfect. Like, my yeah. memories of everything about it are perfect. Like, I don't, I don't need to relive it or... No, that's, yeah, that's great. You, you had the experience, you know, you lived it and yeah. Why, why, yeah. Why go through it? Do you think as years go by, you'll eventually be like, yeah, let me, let me, let me refresh my memory. Let's, let's check this out. Maybe. Or like watching an episode or like, I, I would, I remember one time, like five years ago or something, I was like, man, like how much did I age from the first one to like the third season? Cause like, I'm like, it's all one thing to me. So I remember like going on HBO on demand and seeing just like the first five minutes of a couple seasons just to be like, Oh wow. Like that was a year and a half later. And that was this. But I think if I, I I'm sure I'll be wrong, but just like off the top of my head, it says like, if I didn't watch it during fucking Corona when the whole world was on lockdown, and I wasn't leaving my apartment for however long that was in the beginning weeks or a month if i didn't do it then like i don't don't know if i'm ever gonna do it you know (laughs) yeah exactly it's like i i yeah yeah you had all the time in the world then so it's like yeah i mean let's hope we don't have to you know quarantine as much as we did uh you know at the at the beginning and hell no that shit ain't happening again (laughs) yeah no 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 bueno no bueno Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm sure I'll ask you a, a little more. I, 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 um, and you know, like you said, hearing your voice and a voice, you know, and a message to see that I lazily edit this podcast mainly because I hate, uh, listening to myself even now still. So it's like, I, 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 I can relate to you there not to compare it to acting or anything but you know it's uh i i I can i can relate a little bit to that well it's even worse right because at least with with the acting you could be like well i was making a choice there to but to do this that we're like you know here if you hear yourself do something you're like god that's fucking me man you know because when we do the podcast like sometimes you hear stuff and you're like jesus what was i you know what was i what was i talking about what what like what what even you hear a laugh and you're like that's that's that was my fucking laugh like it sounded like a girl (laughs) Oh, I hear you. I hear you. It's 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 a struggle. It's a struggle. And then when people say, "No, you were fine," it's like I know you're lying, but whatever. Okay, you know. Right. I'm that's the gonna... like, do I look fat in this dress? Thing, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? It's like uh, what people are gonna be like. Hey, you sounded like shit on your podcast this week. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah, uh, yeah. It's uh, you know, it, it is what it is, and uh, it's something I live with, and uh, it's a part of me, and uh, we'll we'll move on. Um, <laughs> Uh, technically, too, I mean, this, uh, you know, Goodfellas, I mean, Scorsese with the camera. I mean, you got that famous tracking shot of uh, the them walking into the Co- Co- Copa Cabana. Um, and uh, yeah, that to me is just, I love those those types of shots and, you know, just the, the 
preparation that has to be involved you know the I, I i mean there's making ofs and stuff of this movie and i just you know remember hearing just like the extras walking through had to be like just perfect timing and it's just like man that's uh that's that's got to be tough that's uh <laughs> it's like um, a symphony and you do like yeah I, I think the shot is like over three minutes long and like there's all this stuff happening and things going on so it's like if something at two minutes and 50 seconds happens bad like everything else is worthless and by the way sometimes it's no one's fault you know like yeah you you pull something that's stuck under a chair and you there like whatever you know like they're trying to they're trying to bring the table over to the middle of the thing and whatever and somebody you know, it doesn't even have to be somebody's fault. Then you add, add like human error for the people on top of it and this and everything. It's, you know, if you watch that scene, right when he's like walking down the stairs, his face looks a lot like uh, Joaquin Phoenix in The Joker. And like there's a couple of moments where like you get Joker vibes from like, yeah. from, like his his laugh, like his Henry Hills oh. laugh. It's crazy. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's that's another thing. Yeah, I, I don't know if Ray Liotta like was doing it on purpose, but or if he just really looks like that when he laughs. Like, but the, I mean, that's a like a meme, a gif now. Like that, the, you know, the, his laughing face. It's just like, man, he's look like, looks, he looks like a maniac. Um, so and it's, good, it's great. Uh, and all but, these like. You know, the best actors or whatever they say, like, the best acting when you see is when you're watching acting. And you go, oh, there's no acting there. And, like, that's so much of that movie. Like, there, there's so few times where, like, you're taken out of a scene because you're like, oh, that person's acting. Or, like, yeah. you feel like it's just all of it. It just all feels so fucking real. Well, I, I mean, I might be totally making this up. I... I I want to say some of the, you know, am I a clown? Do I amuse you was improvised a little bit. I mean, I'm sure, you know, some of what he said was improvised, but I don't know if Ray Liotta knew he was going to go that hard again. I might be totally making this up and thinking of something else. But, but, but yeah, I mean, that's just an example, though, of that just being like, that didn't seem like acting like I everyone just like, wait, is Joe Pesci just going to go nuts here? Uh, you know, I'm watching it, you know, a hundred times now. It's like, obviously, you know, it's going to happen. But even still, it's like you feel the tension Henry Hill is feeling at that moment. Like, wait, is he serious? What's what's going on? <laughs> like, that's yeah. that's that's when you first get that. Like, who's Pesci? Like, who like what's what's his angle here? And then uh, and then, yeah, obviously, it turns out he's 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 fucking around with them. But uh, but yeah, like you said, yeah, it's uh, uh, one of those moments where it's like, yeah, not acting like it's not them just reading lines like it just yeah feels like you're just watching these people on this journey. And it's really easy to like overplay scared and make scared look corny and this but like the way that people were scared of them felt so real. Like whether it was the, the overly respecting them and then like, Oh, it's so nice to sit. Like you felt, you just felt it the whole, there was no like, uh, you know, like it, 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 you, they never had to say like, man, this guy's a scary guy. Like, you know, like watch out for it. You just, you, <laughs> everything that like Scorsese wanted to convey, it was just fucking, it's, it's to me, it's just perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because he got you know, yeah. When during that clown scene, uh, you know, you got uh, the guy coming up to uh, Pesci and is like, you know, you got a seven thousand, you know, seven seven grand, you know, uh, check run up. Like he's like trying to you know talk to him. You can tell he's scared of him, but it, you know he doesn't quite outright say it. And then you know Pesci obviously hits him with a a glass. But yeah, that's that's one of those examples of their like trying not to get under their skin, but it's just like. Do, almost doing the opposite because of the way they're doing it maybe or Pesci would have had that reaction no matter what we don't know like <laughs> it's oh, just, yeah and then he's what is he he's like uh he's like yeah you want me he asked me to christen his daughter you want me to christen your daughter for four grand eight grand whatever seven grand oh my god just all it's like the the humor with the violence and this like how you know it's so it's so hard to find that where it's so hard to find that where the humor is like feel so grounded you know like normally when you get violence in these comedy movies you're like oh this is so fake like yeah like like you, you know you feel like you're on this ride of like okay like this is corny but i'll like i'll fucking smoke weed and watch this movie because it's whatever like it's right. fine where with this it's like you're like w give them all the awards like how do right. you like you know it's just it's it's so it's so good would, would you consider this a, com a comedy 
No, I don't think so because yeah. I think there are I think there are people who could watch it and not laugh at all and still think it's an incredible movie, but I also like I, I don't know how many comedies there are where people could watch the whole movie and not really laugh at it and be like, oh, wow, that was like should win awards, you know? So it's Yeah, like, that's true, yeah. But it's, it's hard. Like it's also, you know, I think a great uh, thing about art is when you don't put it into a box, you know, when you don't yeah. say like, this is that, like the, this is that thing. Because at one point there was no such thing, you know, it was just, it yeah. is what it is. And yeah. um is it, do I consider what do I consider it? I, I don't know. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I just, you know, if you thought it was an actual comedy, but yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's not put in that box. I don't think like it's, oh, it's, that's the thing. Like, I, I, I think, I think there are even, I, I remember hearing this. I think it was about this where like there were scenes where they didn't think it was supposed to be funny. And then like, then like people started laughing, you know, where yeah. they were like, oh shit, like, okay. So yeah, I definitely, I definitely don't think it's a comedy. No. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, definitely not. Again, it's it's yeah that 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 cautionary cautionary tale. Um, how, I mean the, I mean especially the the intenseness. Like you you have him do this like silly cackly laugh, but then you have the intenseness of when uh, Lorraine Bracco calls him and says this guy roughed her up and he drives up and. He's like, just go inside, and he goes up to him in the in the you know uh, driveway and just starts just bashing him in the face with a gun, and it's just like, and it's all one shot. They don't do any cuts or anything. You're just seeing him just boom, 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 and it's just like, yeah, to have a, a comedy, I don't think would have that intense of a scene where you're just kind of like, your hands are getting clammy a little, you know. You're <laughs> like, it's uh, yeah, yeah, that. The yeah, the intenseness is just you. You can't you can't beat it. <laughs> Has Scorsese ever done like a straight up comedy? Uh I mean, I mean, Wolf of Wall Street, but that, yeah, I mean, that's still kind of more like I think. Uh, I, I think that's more comedy than this for sure. I, I don't know if it was going for. Oh, this is going to be a comedy. Um, yeah, but yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think he's done anything you know that was intended to be funny maybe he's done some bad movies right. that were <laughs> supposed to be but yeah no yeah i mean other than like wolf of wall street i think uh uh i don't think so um yeah some people just stay i was actually thinking about this speaking of wolf of wall street like uh dicaprio like it seems like like that dude like never does comedy and <laughs> you know he's he, like I, I was looking at his filmography like not too long ago and i was just like man this dude like he just picks award bait all the time i mean i love him as an actor and stuff he's a great actor it's just like but yeah he he, he does not uh do the comedy angle but yeah i'm, I'm looking at uh, is that uh is that this is up movie on Netflix a comedy? Because I know he uh, just did that, right? It's yeah, I would call it that a comedy, even though it's it's got like political a political agenda to it, and it's uh, it's definitely sending a message. But yeah, I would I would more so say it's a comedy than a drama for sure. Um, I think they definitely like marketed it like a comedy, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I would, I would, I would classify it as a comedy because it's, it well, it's a hundred percent just satire. So yeah, I would, I would say it's, it's, it's comedy. Like it's, it almost seems like a Mel Brooks film in a way. Um, and now that I think of it, like it's, it was, it was decent, but, um, but yeah, comedy. I, I would, I would call it comedy. There we go. So are you go. just uh, like, how did you get into movies? Or you just love movies or? Yeah. Cool, I mean, or? yeah, just, um, I, I mean, you know, it, it's, I think, yeah, I mean, I was a big Star Wars nerd, uh, still am, I'd say, but, uh, Star Wars was my, you know, first love. And then I just kind of loved the, the hero of Indiana Jones and like loved the, that, that kind of, um, adventure in in film and then i saw a couple like making of uh fi movies when i was young and then i just i don't know it just it just kind of just stuck with me um but yeah i don't know yeah if there was a certain i mean i, I was when i got a little older i was more into uh, like i started discovering like de niro movies i got into de niro like i consider him probably my favorite actor of all time taxi driver is probably my 
top three uh, movies of all time. Um, and yeah, I just I, I just love movies. I just love to movies that you know make you feel, make you think, and I don't know. I, I just, I just like movies. I don't know, man. I, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm actually getting to the point where I barely enjoy movies anymore because I'm so into TV shows. Like, Dude, yeah, it's I, hard when somebody says like, "Oh, there's this 90 minute story you got to watch." I'm like, "How invested can I get?" Yeah, in a 90 minute movie when I'm watching these shows where I'm on season three, season four, and I'm so fucking invested. It's true. It's true because yeah, I mean. You, there's so much story to tell in the in these you know series. I mean, look at uh, there's a show called The Sopranos. Um, that uh, you know, it, but it, it, there's yeah, there's so much story to tell. You can get into so much more depth, and you know, it's like yeah, that is the. It seems like the medium for storytelling now, whereas movies, yeah, it seems like they're kind of just falling into like the oh here's the ninety or two hour Marvel movie. Like, you know, there's still good indie movies out there, but no, I, I totally, totally hear what you're saying. What's your, what's your show shows right now? Like, what are you into right now? I just finished, uh, like three nights ago, station 11 new show on HBO max that I fucking loved. Like I thought it was really good. Who's that Uh, with? That's, uh, no uh, big stars that I knew, but other people were telling me, like, somebody from, like, Halt and Catch Fire or somebody from this show. It was oh. nothing that I had ever seen, but that the acting is, like, top notch. You know, like, I feel like you tune into these shows now, and within the first, like, 15 minutes, you're like, okay, this is, like, a corny kind of thing, or, like, this is not well done, or this. Or, like, this thing, right off the bat, you're like, oh, this is fucking well done. Like, every character is real good. And, like, I was actually talking to my friend Kasim, who I do the podcast with. Uh, a couple of days ago and I was saying like I'm starting to realize about films and TV shows it's the same with me for life where like I don't care about the plot I care about the characters I, yeah. and it's the same thing with life where like I care about the people I'm with I don't give a flag where people are like let's go to a fucking football game or we can go yeah I'm like for what we could just chill like well, I have just as much fun if anything like it's annoying for me to fucking go to with you guys to a football game. And then we got to find parking and then we're this. And then, oh, <laughs> what time should we leave? Oh, do you want to leave in the middle of the fourth quarter? Because it's like, there's all these fucking things where it's like, yo, let's just, let's just chill. Like, you know, yeah. let's like whatever. So I'm, I, and that's what this, uh, you know, the, like the plot of station 11, like I don't even, it's, it's not even a big deal, but it's just like the relationships in the show and the characters and this, it's like, uh, another show that I loved that I think is really great is uh, Fargo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fargo. Season one is great. Season two for me is like one of the best sh- seasons of a TV show ever. And that was one of those shows where it was like I thought it was so great because every character in the show could have had their own show. Right. Like, yeah. Every time I, you went to a new scene or whatever, it was like, oh, these guys are just as fucking good as those last guys. Like there wasn't the weak points, you know? Well, that's what I, cause that's, uh, cause I only saw, saw the first season of that. I still need to catch up on that. But, um, I, I love that whole anthology idea of TV shows too, where it's like, you know, you don't have to, you know, continue on with the same characters. It can kind of be in the same, you know, universe a little bit, but you know, you can, you can see different, different parts, kind of like what they're doing with star Wars They're you know, they're, they're, you know, doing different times and, you know, different, um, avenues you can go down like they did with a uh, true detective, like that first season. Oh my God. That was just, yeah. Yeah. One of the best seasons of television and uh, season two is not Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, TV TV's where is that? Why didn't we pick pick a movie or a TV show to talk about? You know, we should have should have done that. You know, yeah, um, I'm all oh my god, I just love like right and now I just started last night uh, the new season of Ozark. Oh yep, yeah, we just, just we just finished that the other night. It's uh yeah, it's because it, it's they did that one of those things where it's a part one of the final season. Right. But good news is I guess part two comes out in May, so not long of a wait. So Jason but, Bateman is just oh. he really just laid it all on the table. There's like five like if you ask people five years ago about Jason Bateman compared to today, and then you just think like 
but he's been in the industry for what, like 30 years. But somehow yeah. these last, like maybe even five years or whatever, you're just like, damn, this guy's got it. Like, yeah. He's, and, and more than that, like he's just every, like, and then at the end of the episode, it's like directed by Jason Bateman. This you're right. like, Jesus, man. <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> leave, leave some, yeah, it's, it's, it's unreal. I've, I've gotten to work on things where I've seen people, uh, try and be the star of something and direct it also. And it, it doesn't come out like that. Yeah, you know, like that is. Yeah, that I is, can on, I can imagine, man. Yeah, it's 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 got to be tough to be you know working with all these moving parts and then also have to star in it. But yeah, he's like you know he started with like comedy and stuff, and then then he's doing this with Ozark. It's just like yeah, it blows my mind the talent that dude has. Did you say some? You said Succession. Did were you have you been watching that? I didn't say that, but I love it. Yeah, oh. I mean, like <laughs> Succession is one of those things where like. Like, listen, this last season was great, but the f- first season to me just blew me away because I didn't know what to expect. I was like, oh, I'll watch this show. Like, someone told me to watch this. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, this is the best show on TV. Yeah. You know, where now, like, you're waiting for a fucking year for season three, and it comes on, and, you know, it's it's good. Like, of, of course, it's it's not, like, it's it's a great show, but I just wasn't, like, that first season, like, I... You know, like I have that, I, I want that yes. taste back in my mouth where I was like, fuck, <laughs> I, I didn't see this shit coming. And that's kind of what I got from Station Eleven. I just, I expected nothing. I didn't know what it was about. I was just like, yeah, like I'll, I'll fire this up. My friend Kasim told me to do it. And then I was like, it was one of those things where afterwards I'm like looking through the soundtrack and I'm, I'm putting on songs because I want to hear it because I'm, I'm back in like, I want to be back in that universe, you know, right. which I, I don't feel a lot. Like I'm, a lot of times I'm done with something and I'm like, all right, I'm done. You know, where with this, I was like, I need more. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that's that, to me some of the best movies I've ever seen or TV shows I've ever seen. Yeah, I have no pre- preconceived notions. I have no idea what it's about, what what it's going to be, what the critics are saying, and it turns out to just, you know, I I didn't have anyone to sway me beforehand like, "Oh, this is going to be great," and then you're disappointed or "No, it's going to be, you know, bad," and then you're Actually, I think it's better to go in thinking it's going to be bad, but For you know, sure. it's all about you enjoying it. You know, it's 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 you, you can't let other people speak for you, especially when it comes to to art. Well, maybe not especially when it comes to art, but art is art is part of it, man. Um, but yeah, yeah, Succession, man. Yeah, we we, we just yeah finished se- the most recent season, and it's like oh. I almost I almost had uh, Brian Cox on. I might get him in uh, wow. in a uh, couple months. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm kind of scared to talk to him. So uh, he's yeah, he's, he's just, an intimidating dude. <laughs> he's fantastic. And like you know, that's one of those things like we talked about earlier, which is like there is not one moment of acting when you watch him. Like, yeah, you, you don't go like, oh, he he kind of he took a swing there and missed. Like everything he does, you're like, holy. Shit. And then like you know, not to. Like, I think he's incredible, but then there's times where you go, man, he's so old and like, he's just playing this old guy and sick this. And then he does something like where he like lost his mind in that scene. And you're like, holy shit. Like this is, you know, it's just, it's incredible. It's, he's, he's, he's unreal. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Unbelievable. And, um, uh, uh to talk, uh, backtrack a little bit on, uh, good fellas. Um, we'll, we'll wrap, wrap up good fellas a little bit. I mean, that's, uh, you know, the, obviously the scene with, you, you know, the, uh, now go get your, your shine box. That's brilliant. Um, and <laughs> I just love that shot when they're beating up Frank Vincent and <laughs> Robert De Niro, <laughs> the way he had the cameras like up at Robert De Niro and he's like kicking and he's like, almost uh. like spinning his leg. It's just, it's funny, but it's just Robert De Niro. So it's just awesome too. And it's you would just, think in a normal movie, like a director would go up to him after and be like, whoa, what were you doing there? Like, <laughs> yeah, what? I don't even know what that, like, I would love to know how that scene came about, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it, yeah, just there's just I mean, so many, so many moments in in this movie. I mean, there's even heartbreaking moments. You know, even though he's a freaking maniac, you know, even when you know um, Tommy gets whacked, you're just like, oh damn, you know. And you get De Niro's reaction in the phone booth and stuff. It's just like, man, this 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 life is is brutal. You know, it's uh, it's yeah, it's again. I think I've said it five times now. It's a cautionary tale. You don't you don't uh, want to want to get into this life, but you know, e- even at the end, you know, he's still just saying, you know, I'm just I'm just an old regular schmuck, you know. I'm <laughs> that's. But think that's, about think about how good a movie has to be for it to be like 
like when you're like, oh, look, like in that scene, the way that he kicks him, like in, like in a fucking normal, like if I watched a movie last night, I can't even, I can't think of a movie in the last 10 years I've watched where I was like something that, like, I don't know if it's nuanced or like so where you're like, oh, the way that when that guy was killing that guy, the way that he kicked him. <laughs> I loved it. Like, I don't even know. Like, I watch movies now and I'm just like, you know, is this over yet? Like, or whatever. Like, I just, I don't find those moments like you find in these Scorsese movies. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Who who mentions, yeah, how, yeah, the way, you know, someone, you know, did a kicking motion. And yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, it's so interesting to, I mean, it speaks on obviously Scorsese's craft and Eero's craft and all that. Um, and, and as you were saying about, you know, TV shows are the way to go right now, just story wise, like this, you know, I mean, you could make a TV show out of it, but they were able to tell like a full story. You were totally invested in two and a half hours. Like there are still, you can do that with a movie still. Um, but yeah, I think this is one of those great examples of a movie where you can get invested in the character characters you know just because of i mean again we're talking scorsese he's a he's he's a master um have you have you ever had the pleasure of meeting scorsese uh no i've never i don't even know if i've ever been at the same thing because you know when we would go to all those reward shows it would be most of them are just television shows uh right you know and i think that and they were all before like he got involved in television because he he ended up getting like boardwalk empire was yeah his and any and i'm sure he's done some other stuff but like um yeah when when we were you know like not to, you know if if i give credit to sopranos for something it has nothing to do with me you know so i don't want to be like oh i'm tooting my own because it's not my own horn it's <laughs> hbo's david chase's horn and this but i really think uh sopranos had a lot to do with making people kind of go like yeah i'm a movie star but i'll do tv like because it was you know it, it was that good it was cable it was the characters were so rich it was like they were they we were doing stuff that people said like you know we want to do that and i think you know david chase and hbo and like obviously james Gandolfini, edie falco like i was talking about somebody like with edie falco the other day which is like jesus like she's you know i talk about her all the time because it's like she's like yeah it's just as good as an actor as it gets like she's 10 out of 10. I never saw her do like, you know, you, you, you know somebody for 10 years and you work with them a lot and you go, when is, when are you going to have a fucking bad day? Like, right. Yeah. Cause you're just electric. Like, she's... yeah, they, if they put like, they could have like, I casting for that. I mean, is just amazing because they, they could have made Carmela like super annoying. And just like, if it was like a different actress, like I, they could have made her like, like, you could have really hated her, but just the way Edie Falco, you know, uh, did it was just like you, you rooted for her. But like, I, I can see like if another actress was cast, like it would be like the old, you know, like how people treat uh Skylar from breaking bad. Like everyone for some reason hates her. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I could see it being like that, but, but yeah, Edie, right, the casting yeah. was so good and they were so detailed on the show that even there were some people who were casted to be like, uh, you know, like Drea De Matteo, who played uh, Andrea, right? Is that her name on the show? Um, uh, on uh, Sopranos. Sopranos. Um, I, I just Mike, did a rewatch. Andrea. Uh, Andrea. I don't know why I'm slipping. We're here. gonna. We're, I'll, I'll. I'll edit it because no, I'm. Not, I'm gonna keep it in. Yeah. You didn't know that. Dre, no, Dre De Matteo what? played Adriana. Adriana, Adriana there we go. That's it. Damn it. That was, yeah. uh, Adriana, and when they hired her, they just hired her to be a hostess at the restaurant. But like, yeah, the, and then, the casting yeah. is just, they're so, they pay such attention to detail that then when they, they saw her working more and a couple episodes, they're like, we need to give her a full, and then she went on to win an Emmy for the show. Yeah. It, well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's got, it, it, Sopranos, yeah, totally paved the way because it, right after that you had... Uh, Mad Men and you know Breaking Bad and um, yeah actually during you even had The Wire and you know just it it, it totally you know paved the way for that where it's like yeah it used to be like you if you were a TV star you you were promoted to movies where yeah now you see like these big actors going to do these TV shows because I think 
even even the big actors are looking for story like and it's it's there it, it is there but i think first of all i think more money's in tv now than it is in 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 film um but yeah if you really want to tell a a great story tv's uh the way to go maybe uh, maybe this should be a tv show now you know this yeah. uh this podcast and um, then you talk <laughs> about uh like you know talk about actors having a bad day it's like if you if you have a bad day on a movie set that might be five percent of the movie like you yeah. know or if you have a bad day on like everybody had a fucking bad day on sopranos but that was one day out of 10 years you know yeah. it was like yeah it's it's fine everyone has a bad day we're like you know, on a movie forget it. if you have two fucking bad days on a movie it's like we got to get this guy out of here you know if you can't like remember your line you can't do this we're like with us it was you know like you you, you go this person's been fucking remarkable for a year what are we gonna like, right and, and others but there's nobody who even you know I, I i was the weakest link on the show you know i'm just fucking walking in cursing throwing attitude yeah. and whatever but uh <laughs> i made sure i knew all my lines because i knew like they're such good actors and i yeah. don't have that i never you know took an acting class whatever so like, i'm gonna go lines you know I'm, I'm gonna make sure of that right yeah what's uh um uh, I'll I'll let you go soon here. Um, but real quick, uh, <laughs> um, you know, obviously you worked with the great, you know, James Gandolfini was uh, in. There were a few scenes where you know he he roughed up AJ a little bit and uh, you know screamed at him. Were were, were you ever uh, uh, like um, not intim- like yeah like intimidated? Were you ever like actually scared when he was doing that to you, or were you always just like nah, he's in control? Like this is just acting like how, wh- yeah no it was definitely like you know we would do rehearsal and we would rehearse the scene and then we would do the first take and i would let him know like it's okay you could fucking choke me and throw me against so like don't worry like you you could you could do the shit that you got to do yeah. like he you know he wanted the first take or whatever he would want to be careful and not do this and then once you let him know like you know like hey it's okay then it was it was all good and he's just like you know never intimidating never anything he's like the most gentle sweet guy and then you know and then he had to be fucking a killer and he had to be tony and he was unreal like he's you know he's a 10 again another like 10 out of 10 where you're just like i don't even know how he does this shit you know like you there were times where like we would be in the car like driving out to set together and be laughing, talking or whatever. And then you know, 30 minutes later, he'd be fucking, you know, spit would be flying out of his mouth while he's threatening to kill somebody. And you're like, yeah, that's <laughs> that's just he's that fucking good. Like, yeah, what, yeah. what do you do? I don't know. Like, he's, he's, yeah, seriously, he's unreal. Yeah. But also, you know, I think there is uh, I think uh, to me, I would imagine there's I've done both, but I, I don't really know. I think. When you're doing a TV show, there does come a time where when you're doing a scene and you go, you know, I've been working on this show for six years and you just kind of know, like you're so comfortable in the house because it's like your house. Like, you know, when we would be shooting in the Sopranos house, which was on a stage, they'd be like, all right, you got three hours to do whatever. And I'd be like, all right, I'm going to go into fucking AJ's room and take a nap because yeah. that's, so it's like I, it's when, you're, when you're doing a movie, you know, and you might have 14 days of work, like you don't want to be the guy who's sleeping on set. Like, you know, yeah. you want to be like, what the fuck is this guy up to? But like, <laughs> you know, when you're with these people for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, some of them, it's like, there's no, it's like family, you know, there's no, yeah. no one's fucking judging you. Nobody's, you know, everybody's just there to support you and it's uh yeah it was you know it's such a fantastic experience and that's another reason like you said watching the show it's like my memory of that show is perfect as far yeah. as like so great this i don't want to watch the show and like hate my performance and right, this, and then be yeah. like oh yeah well the show and have any sort of bad feelings about it like where i am now is just like the people still some of my best friends uh jamie lynn is like a sister to me like you know she's one of the greatest people i've ever met in my life and like Sometimes I think about the show and it's like, you know, I said like I grew up poor and whatever and I think about the money and it's like, man, that's the great thing. But how do you compare it to the relationships you've made? You know, how do you compare it to – and then not only just like direct relationships but indirect, you know, how there's people who I've met because of the show and because I did that where if I was still, you know, living in my neighborhood, I never would have fucking met these people. I wouldn't know these people. So it's, you know, I've – told david chase but it's like you know he's one of three people in my life where it's like you changed my life in such a insane way like you just saying like all right that kid could do it like yeah. you know it was it was why i maybe why i'm alive today you know definitely why i'm able to 
like afford rent in a place that I live on my own in California, which is nice. But you know, it's it's uh, just trying to be grateful for that every day and realize how lucky I am for it. You know, is Soprano still play, paying the bills? Uh, no, so. I uh, I made some good investments. Luckily, poker's been good. Uh, yeah, I just had one investor. Like I invested in uh, a company that IPO'd uh, a month ago, which was great. And like, I just got lucky doing some stuff. And then you know, I like I I was into like cryptocurrency. Like in uh, 2016, I was like, yeah, this oh. sounds good. Yeah, so it's like you know, a couple of. <laughs> couple of things not a big are, deal uh, you know yeah just crypto, I just, you know. but it's all it's all luck you know I, it's <laughs> it's a lot of it is anyway but. hey man you you were in the sopranos and you got into cryptocurrency I, i'd say it's a little <laughs> more than luck so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you uh, do you know uh michael gandolfini at all yeah yeah he's fantastic he's yeah. he's such a great guy like you know i have a brother who's uh you know, what is he, 12 years younger than me or whatever. And I look at them the same as where I'm like, man, I wish I could be like these 12 years ago or 15 to have the head on their shoulders that they have when I was that young because I was a fucking idiot. Like I just wanted to do drugs and stare at a wall. You know, I just yeah. wanted to take like 15 Percocets and like not move and like see yeah. how long, how many days in a row I could do that for. And then, so it's like to to know how clear headed they are. And I think you know, I think this is a different time. You know, I think 15 years ago, the way I was and growing up with my friends, it was like, if I wanted to learn about yoga, it was like, fuck you, dude. Like, what the fuck you mean you want to learn about yoga? Where now it's like with YouTube and podcasts yeah. and this, it's like anytime you hear something where you're like, oh, hey, like this person is that, let me listen to them. Where when I was 21 years old and up until I was, you know, 30, it was like, if you do yoga, you're a weirdo. <laughs> like that right. was it. Like if you shop in these places that have food for that are more expensive than the places we shop, you're a fucking weirdo. So like right. that was just how I thought of people. I'd be like, I don't want to be a fucking weirdo. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything about yoga. Like what am I going to do? Go to a fucking, uh, bookstore and buy a book about yoga. Like who I've told my whole life, these people are fucking weirdos. But now it's like, you know, you, there's people who you respect and, you know, I think a lot of, in some ways, people are less judgmental about stuff and you hear, like, you know, I remember back in the day, there was that one thing you would hear, like anybody who's like my age knows about this, but we're, or like, you know, whatever age, like around that, where it's like, yo, you heard football players do ballet? Like, like that was the thing. It was like, that was the one thing that everybody fucking heard where they'd be like, yo, what? Like, and there would be like one dude who was like, yo, like, maybe I'll try ballet. And it was still like, oh, you fucking loser. Like, what do you mean you're going to do ballet? You're going to put on a fucking tutu? Like, we're now, like, you know, you hear about the greatest athletes in the world or whoever, people who you respect or listen to their podcasts, and they're like, yeah, you know, I meditate. I do yoga. Yeah. I eat clean. I do, I make these decisions to be mindful in this. And you're like, wow, okay, yeah. And I think younger people, uh, you know, I think there's the people who are just obsessed with, like, Instagram and TikTok. And then I yeah. think there's the people who go like, oh, wow, like, yeah, let me try this and let me try being mindful. Like, I never thought about being mindful before I was 30 years old about anything. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's there's that, you know, uh, it's a balance. There's that dark hole you can go down where you're just obsessed with, you know, just social media and you're just that's your, you know, uh go to. But then if but if you're using, you know, the internet for good, like using it to better yourself and to, you know, learn these things, you know, that's that's when it's like, man, I wish I had that at at that age because I mean, I, I'd probably be at the same place, but you know, you never know. You never know. Um, uh, so I, I assume you, you do yoga. Is that what you're telling us? I, uh, <laughs> when I first got sober, I was doing a bunch of yoga and I was like, Oh wow. Like, cause you know, like, again, I grew up in New York city. There was no such thing as a jock. Like I only knew jocks for movies or whatever, because my, my, my schools never, I went to public school my whole life. No, none of these schools had fucking sports teams or anything. So like, uh, what was my point of that? Yeah. Well, no, no, Sorry. no. We were, you were saying, uh, uh you do yoga. You, you do oh, yoga. So, you said, oh, so yeah. any, anybody who I knew who worked out, like, again, it was one of those things where it was like, oh, that person's a fucking asshole. They work out to have big muscles. That was it. So I was yeah. like, oh, well, I don't fucking care about having big muscles. So like, yeah. And everybody's like, yeah, they're, you know, it's like, uh, putting somebody down so you don't have to, you, you know, right. put in the fucking work that they do. Cause you know how hard it is or whatever. But yeah. there were none of that. Like there were, 
I could tell you, you know, there were a thousand kids in my first public school. Nobody fucking worked out. Thousand kids in my second public school. Nobody worked out. There were like, there was not one kid I knew who like ran even or like did anything. Like there was just no exercising. Go like some kids would like fucking play basketball in the backyard and shit, or like we'd throw a football around. But there was no like real organized sports in our schools or whatever. So nobody was like clanging around in a fucking weight room and this. So when I got sober, I was like, well, I don't want to be a fucking asshole who's like in the gym lifting weights or whatever. And one of my friends is like, yo, have you ever tried yoga? And I think the way that like they got me to is like, you know, I forget if I listened to Joe Rogan at the time and he talked about enjoying it, but then also like, like, yo, you know, yoga class is just full of hot chicks. Like, like you go to yoga <laughs> class and it's like, yeah. it's all these hot chicks. And you're like, oh, okay. And I remember like going to my first yoga class and it was like 18 girls and like one dude in the class. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, like this is fucking crazy. But also it just made me feel good. Like I would leave those classes feeling better than I walked in. And before yeah. that, the only thing That's- that did that for me was drugs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. What, what difference does it make what people think of me when I, I feel great? Like when, you know, I mean, the, the, the stigma behind, you know, a lot of things now is, has changed too. And it's like, you know, it's, it's not like it, like it used to be, you know, um, it, it's, uh, pe- for sure. people are and more for me, accepting. It was also just part of- totally. And for me, it was just part of growing up and getting older too. And, you know, being like, sitting around with your friends and and not whatever you guys were talking about wasn't the fucking gospel you know like you listen to other people's perspectives and you go okay i'll i'll give that a try instead of like sure you know, when i was 18 years old i was like moved out uh and i had my first apartment ever and it was me and seven or eight of my friends every single day in that apartment for a year just getting trashed. Like I never unpacked my fucking book bags or like, or like my, my boxes. I mean, of like moving everything. It was like, we sat on the couch that first day when we moved in, started smoking weed and a year just went by like yeah. of going out every night party. You know what I mean? So it was like, I thought in my, and I remember saying to my friends, like, I was like, I want to live in this apartment for the rest of my life with you guys fucking partying every day, this, and like, so what my dream was now is like my nightmare, you know, if like, if right. I was every day partying with, with those eight guys in that room for fucking, you know, 18 hours a day. And I was like, I had a bed in my bedroom and I would sleep on the couch every night, like just crazy, you know? And we're like, yeah. you know, but I just... We, you know, before I feel like podcasts and everybody was using cell phones every two seconds and this, you were just in your circle and that was it. Like I didn't, mm. any other circles, it was like, those guys are fucking losers, man. You know, where right. now yeah. it's like, it's- you're, I, I, I just on my YouTube page, like there's, I have the crypto, I have the comedians, I have the mindful shit, I have the yoga, I have the meditation, I have the, like, it's such a, you know, you run the gamut of just yeah. things to do on there instead of, you know, when I was... 18 it would have been like slipknot fucking videos and like <laughs> and like just videos of weed like just looking at weed you know? right yeah just oh look at that strand oh man look yeah at that. <laughs> yeah it's a uh, yeah i mean i mean it's it's first of all i mean it's growing up obviously but yeah i mean it's you know times have changed too and it's just yeah it's uh it's uh it, it's it, if you want to better yourself you can uh you just got to yeah put it put in the effort and you have to want to i think is also key i've learned that with you know dieting and everything like that cuz i i'm a bigger guy and i always try to you know i'm always going on some sort of diet well not always i i want to go on a, all sorts of diets a lot but um but yeah it's a, it's it's the want that i struggle with sometimes it's like i don't care i'm eating a cheeseburger or, you know drinking drinking another beer or you know things like that but yeah it's the want that uh i struggle with but i'm and getting that's, there that's that's the thing that like when i because i want pizza all the fucking time but my thing is always like do i want to feel good for 15 minutes or do i want to feel good all day tomorrow like, yeah, you know, like yeah. that's my thing because not that eating a slice of pizza today would make me feel like shit tomorrow, but if everything right. I wanted to do, I gave into, I would wake up tomorrow and feel like yeah. shit. It's guaranteed. So domino effect. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, if I do this, I'm going to then want to do that. And uh, yeah, so sometimes I'll wake up like that if I, you know, was thinking about maybe drinking and I wake up and I'm like, man, I'm glad I didn't drink last night. Like, <laughs> cause I feel great. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you, you definitely have to think future, uh, future you, uh, when I, I lost a w- bunch of weight in the past, I always said like, 
make future Ben proud, like make, make future Ben proud. And that actually worked. It's not working for me right now, but, but <laughs> yeah. it, it did work in the past. I just got to get it to work for me again, but you know, um, but but uh, anyway, sorry to keep you so long. No, I no, know, it's all good. Uh, no, yeah, I uh, love the conversation. Uh, and then real quick, just to wrap up, good fellas. Uh, uh, you know, obviously you, you have Doctor Melfi's in this movie. You got Christopher in this movie. Is it weird seeing um, people you've worked with uh, uh, in things? No, not at all. I, no. I don't. Uh, not yeah, weird, it's... like all, oh, but like you know, just like. Uh, I guess, yeah, weird. Is it weird? <laughs> I, I find I don't find it weird watching them and stuff, but sometimes when I meet people and they say like, you know, oh, I did a play with Jamie before she did Soprano, like that time, that, some of that stuff, I'm like, wow, that's weird. Like, you know, like I, I feel like, yeah. I'm like, wow, really? Like I'm so interested in that where like <laughs> when I see these people who I think were the best actors in the world, like I'm not surprised. I'm surprised I don't see them in more fucking movies before Sopranos, you know? I'm like, how the fuck did nobody – cast James Gandolfini in everything. Like, obviously they casted him and stuff, but, like, he should have been... Like, Edie Falco should have been in every fucking movie. Like, you know, it's like... Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's weird to me that I don't see them in more stuff, if anything. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's crazy, but... uh, um, uh, What was I going to say? Oh, the... uh, You know, and then, obviously, the... uh, Michael Imperioli is that how you pronounce it yeah right Michael Imperioli you know that that whole sequence where he shoots him in the foot oh my goodness and then you know he the the whole uh uh what he tells uh Tommy to go fuck himself and (laughs) yeah I I love De Niro's reaction at first you know he's like (laughs) Tommy good for you man and then he notices Pesci isn't reacting and he's like what's the world coming to yeah you you just want to rough him up a little maybe but he freaking shoots him (laughs) so good and uh, he's like, you're digging the hole. He's like, oh, well, you know, what are you going to do? It's the first hole I ever dug, you know, what a big deal, you know? <laughs> so and that's great. the thing that's so great, too, is like they say shit under their breath. Like, right. you know, you don't get that in movies anymore, I feel like, you know, where like yeah. these guys, like they don't even fucking Scorsese. He's like, I don't even care. And that's, you know, that's one thing David Chase said that he was trying to do with Sopranos was he never wanted to give the audience what they wanted. Yeah. So yeah. any time that it was like, like, like somebody might be like, oh, I didn't hear that. He'd be like, yeah, good. Like, you know, like, like, yeah. for, like now you'll think about that. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> instead, instead of just being like, oh my God, what if somebody didn't hear that? He's like, I don't fucking care. Like, well, kind of along those same line, lines of what you were talking about, you know, you're just interested in characters. It, it you know, kind of goes to, to the plot where it seems like, you know, so many people want to, a resolution of something. And, you know, I think, you know, uh, Sopranos is the epitome of, you know, not necessarily getting a resolution. But you got to realize, first of all, that I mean, that's not really not what the show is about. The show is about these characters. It's about, you know, this <laughs> this life, this lifestyle. It's like it's never going to end for these people. So it's not going to end for you either. You know, that's, that's kind of how I, I take that, but even, you know, just any show or movie where it has an ambiguous ending. I, I almost like that more just because it's, it's more real. It's, it's not final. Like it could be final in your mind. You, you make it up. I, I love the, the whole, you, you can interpret it any way you want. And I think that's also a part of art. Um, yeah, and I think that this the answer when people are like, what did you think of the ending in this? It's like, well, I could sum up the ending of a lot of shows in one sentence. And right. and that's that's not trying to sum it up in one sentence. That's just right. summing it up. Like, yeah, yeah. this guy died and, and this person went on to do this. Or like, you know, the, the, this happened. The, we're like, with Sopranos, it's like, how long you got? Like, you know, when people yeah. want to fucking talk about the ending. And by the way, it's t- t- uh, 14 years. Yeah. Like, and you know, have passed and it's still just crazy. So I'm like, I when people are like, yeah, the ending sucked. I'm like, how could you think that? And I understand, but it's like, how could you think that and still hear how much people, so I guess, so the people who didn't like it can sum up the ending in one sentence and they go, that sucked. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's like, did, did you really want to see Tony Soprano's bra- brains blown out right in front of everybody? Like, did you really want to see just you know but like what what did you what did you expect why how would you want it to end like no matter how it ended people weren't going to be happy but like you said it's 15 years later people are still talking about it and that's a uh, i think uh uh testament to 
testament is that the word i don't know it's a yeah. compliment to david chase so um but uh but yeah man it's uh been an absolute blast uh, any any final thoughts on on goodfellas the movie we talked about for two minutes no it's it's it's, it's a 10 <laughs> to me you know it's fucking yeah. great it's it's like hanging out with your friends it's a movie you could put you know and it's also like it's so great that it's one of the best movies ever, and it's not one of those movies where, like, you want to tell someone to shush. Like, you know, like if somebody's fucking uh, this and you're laughing because you it just feels like you're hanging out. Like, it's, you know, right. it's, it's, it's just, it's it's so great. It's, it, it's, it's perfect. Defi- it's 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 a movie you can have on in the background, almost like a comedy, but at the same time, yeah, it's not it's not that comedy, you know? It's, it's but yeah, you can still have it on in the background. Not, be, not, not only because you've seen it a hundred times, but just because, yeah, like you said, it's that kind of movie you know so yeah it's just yeah uh, absolutely brilliant uh, hasn't like it aged amazingly like it's like there's no scenes where it's just like wow this seems real out of date and you know uh it's just yeah amazing and, and actually w- w- real quick what did, did you did you uh watch the irishman that came out a couple years ago yeah i watched or, it i didn't uh I, you know, I like. I think people had like so many feelings about it. Where I was just like, "Oh, that was good," like you know. But yeah. I wasn't like, "Oh my god, I was fucking blown away." Or I also wasn't one of these, wasn't one of these people who was like angry and like, "Oh my god, yeah. this." I just saw it and I was like, "Yeah, that was good." Like I, yeah. I probably should watch it again. But the fact that it was so long is something that <laughs> is like fuck. fuck. Like maybe yeah. uh, I don't know if I want to watch it again or this. I probably should just to really like cement my feelings on it because i feel like right now i kind of just don't really have any you know yeah and i was like yeah, yeah that's good like you should like i wouldn't tell someone they got to watch it i wouldn't tell someone not to watch it yeah yeah that's kind of how i am like i even i'm thinking back like i remember liking it but now i feel like i can't really tell you anything about it because i don't really remember much but i remember you know yeah it was good um but but yeah i mean it's 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 hard when you know your your heroes are older and you know just like oh they're they're old men now and they're trying to look young with this technology but um but uh but man it's uh it's been an absolute blast having you can people uh where can they find your podcast and all that and and any and social media you have social media and all that jazz i don't have social media personally but my podcast does and you could uh contact me there or you could find me there and you could find all of our clips there and our show there it's pajama pants podcast and we're on youtube and we're on anywhere you get podcasts anywhere sweet man well it has been a blast talking with you we really appreciate you you coming on absolutely man thanks for having me there you have it folks robert eiler good fellas uh great conversation really enjoyed uh speaking with him uh and uh yeah he's a really down-to-earth dude and humble and yeah he's a great guy uh and uh yeah hope to hope to talk to him again someday so but uh again follow us on instagram at blockbuster mentality on twitter at blockbuster cast go to our website blockbustermentality.com and yeah there we have it um Hope you guys enjoyed it. Love you guys. Got more guests coming up. Some uh, from Reno 911. Uh, Harlan Williams. Comedian Harlan Williams will be coming on. Uh, um, Big Head from Silicon Valley. Remember him? Big Head from Silicon Valley. Uh, He'll be on. Josh Brenner. Um, And... You'll just have to stay tuned for all that. All right, folks, I'm done. All right, well, that is it for me. For Robert, I'm Ben. And as always, grab some popcorn, grab some snacks. We'll catch you guys at the movies. 